hello friends what's up let us continue corporate finance this is the second video and in this video we are going to study about the income statement of the company okay in the previous video we have already studied about the balance sheet okay this is one of the important uh, financial statements of a company and the second important uh, financial statement is the income statement so income and st income statement basically is a statement that shows a company's income and expenditures okay it shows company's income and expenditures uh, it is also called the profit and loss statement because in the income statement we will get to see what is the revenue of the company okay and what is the profit of the company whether the company is making any profit or any loss right so that's why it is also known as profit and loss statement or it is also known as statement of operations because it shows uh, you know what is the revenue that the company is making what is the cost of you know total production what is what are the different expenditures it is making on you know different things like uh, raw materials and manpower labor cost and you know interest payments um, so many different things so that's why it is also known as statement of operation and it is also known as earning statement so these are the different names given to the same thing which is commonly known as income statement of the company now uh, what is the use of uh, income statement so it helps the business owners basically who own the company people who own the company who are the shareholders of the company who are the owners of the company it helps them to understand how to generate profit okay either by increasing revenue or by decreasing cost or both see it is a very simple logic that uh, you know profit is equal to what profit is basically your revenue your sales right your sales revenue minus your okay cost of production total cost of production so this is a simple formula for profit now when you want to increase the profit if you want to increase the profit you have to either increase sales revenue or you have to decrease the cost of production so either of the two things or you can do both the things also so basically looking at the income statement you will get to know what are our revenues what is the cost of production and what is the profit if you want to increase the profit how we can increase the profit whether we can increase it by increasing the revenue by you know maybe manipulating prices or increasing the production so you know they can devise a strategy like that there are two main groups of people who use the income statement okay so income statement or the profit and loss statement of the company is used by majorly two groups of people so first group is known as internal group internal group meaning the company management board of directors etc so you know these are the internal people in order to devise their strategy as to how to increase revenue how to increase profits and obviously the second group of people is the external people meaning outsiders who are investors in the company who are the creditors who are the competitors right they want to see competitors also want to see how is the company doing creditors meaning the banks and nbfcs and different financial institutions who are giving loan to the company so they also want to see at the income statement as to how this company is doing whether the company is generating enough cash flows whether it is able to produce enough profit to pay its you know debt and interest and etc so all these things and you know this income statement is very important now an income statement of a company looks like this okay we i in the previous video as i had shown you how does a balance sheet look like now in this video let us look at how does the um, uh, you know uh, income statement look like so in income statement there are no two parts actually so in balance sheet we had seen that there are two parts on one side there are assets other side there are liabilities but in income statement it is just a statement so it starts with you know your sales revenue so this part is the revenue part revenue part meaning okay after selling whatever is the money you are receiving that is your revenue so gross sales revenue meaning you know for example if you have sold say 5000 uh, for example you have a business of selling uh, say cars okay you are selling cars and one car the cost is say rupees 10 lakhs okay 10 lakh is a cost of one car and you are in a in a in a year for example you are selling say uh, 50 cars okay you are selling 50 cars so if you are selling 50 cars that means your total gross revenue will be 50 multiplied by 10 lakh right 50 multiplied by 10 lakh which is equal to 5 crore rupees right so this is your gross revenue so let us assume that the gross revenue of the company is 25000 rupees now you know whenever you are doing business maybe some returns are coming and you are paying some allowances to your customers also you know as a return or maybe you know in some form of 
uh, you know cash back or something so in that case that will be deducted from your sales revenue because uh, you know you are just you are not receiving money for that but you are you know doing some kind of exchange or something so say uh, you know 3000 rupees is your returns or allowances so your net sales revenue your net revenue becomes 22000 okay so 25000 minus 3000 gives you 22000 this is your net you know sale revenue for a given year now income statement is always for a given year okay this is for one year so this income statement is maybe say for example 2021 or it can be for one quarter also for one month also but it is for a given period that's why income statement is a flow statement okay it gives you the flow i already uh, told you in a very first video of our lesson series what are the flow variables and what are the stock variable in balance sheet balance sheet is a uh statement of stock variables whereas income statement is a statement of flow variables okay because this is for a given period of time so say this 25000 is a revenue for one year 2021 22 financial year this is the revenue for one year okay income statement can be for one year it can be for one month it can be for six months it can be for one quarter also okay some companies release it every month some companies release release it every quarter some companies release it every six months okay like that so uh now let us assume that here it is for one year so the net sales of a company is say 22000 okay 22000 now uh this part this part is a is this part is known as cost of goods sold okay cogs cost of goods sold meaning what say for example as i had told you in this example that a company is manufacturing cars say for example now in order to produce cars okay it will require some raw materials right it will require some metal some aluminum some rubber some tires some machinery etc it will also require some labor right it will pay to its labor you know which are directly working in manufacturing of that car okay see labor are also you know labor may be working in many different capacities one type of labor is directly working towards manufacturing of car okay they are directly working on the assembly line another type of labor they may be working in go downs okay they may be lifting uh, you know they may be lift you know they may be doing the work of you know uh, offloading and unloading of materials etc then there will be other kind of labors maybe you know vehicle drivers etc etc so we have to consider you know here cost of goods sold meaning okay here we have to consider the labor direct labor which are actually manufacturing the goods which are actually producing the goods okay so we can we consider that labor here so they are known as direct labor okay direct material direct labor which is directly used in production of that commodity of that goods okay then uh, you know there are some indirect labor also so in some of the balance sheets in some of the companies they consider indirect labor which are you know labor which, who are working in go downs who are who are you know uh, you know drivers of the vehicles and you know other other things they consider it here in the cost of goods sold itself in some of the companies they don't consider it here they consider it you know in other operating expenses okay so some of them consider indirect labor as an operating expenses some of them consider it as a part of cost of goods sold it is not very strict but you just try to understand that these are the different expenditures that the company is doing okay towards manufacturing then there are some manufacturing overheads also right manufacturing overheads meaning uh, you know uh, maybe some 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 kind of expenditure one off expenditure that the company has to do every year uh, you know as part of manufacturing process so say for example direct material cost is 3200 rupees uh, direct labor is 4000 indirect labor is 3700 and manufacturing overhead is 3600 so we sum of all this okay we we do a total of all this and we get the total cost of goods sold okay this is a net cost of goods sold so this is basically if you add all this up you get 14500 okay 14500 now you subtract this 14500 from 22000 okay let me use a different color pen so you subtract this uh, 22000 uh minus 14500 you get the gross profit so once so basically your gross profit is what gross profit is basically your sales revenue right your sales revenue which is your net sales revenue minus your cost of good sold so this is your gross profit okay this is a gross profit of the company now see we have not reduced we have not uh, you know subtracted the operating expenses yet and that is why it is known as gross profit 
now this part is known as operating expense part okay we have to look at you know other expenses which are part of the operations so you know then there are marketing uh, you know marketing expenses advertising expenses promotion expenses so although these are these these things directly don't go as a part of the goods but they are important for the business that's why they are known as operating expenses so say for example on marketing advertisement promotion etc uh, a company is paying 1200 rupees okay and then there are some administrative expenses also right general and administrative expenses right you know you have to buy computers and printers and etc etc documentation you have to pay to the you know chartered accountant and you know different things so you know say that is 800 rupees so this total operating expense is rupees 2000 right this is rupees 2000 again from the gross profit when you subtract this 800 okay you get 5500 uh, when you subtract this 2000 okay from this 7500 when you subtract this 2000 you get 5500 this 5500 is known as ebita okay this is known as ebita now what is the full form of ebita i'll tell you ebita is earnings earnings before okay earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization okay don't worry don't be scared by low by listening to these terminologies i'll just uh, you know simplify it for you see basically you just keep one thing in mind very simple thing in mind you subtract the you know cogs from the net sales revenue you get the gross profit from the gross profit you subtract the op operating expenses you get the ebita okay this is known as ebita now ebita is earnings before you you reduce the depreciation amortization interest and taxes from your total gross income okay from your gross profit now what is depreciation we already know that a company uses some capital some physical capital machinery it goes wear and tear so every year for accounting purpose it has to show some depreciation right for example i'll give you simple for example a company is using a machine worth rupees 10 rupees 3000 now this machine it will use for 10 years so every year for one year the depreciation is 300 rupees simple mathematics so this is the same depreciation that the company is accounting for amortization meaning what amortization meaning it is the payment towards the principal payment towards the principal of loan okay principal of loan for example a company is take has taken a loan of say uh, you know 10000 rupees okay and this 10000 rupees it is going to pay over say 35 years now every year it will pay interest and it will also pay some uh, principal amount also so this 300 rupees is the payment towards principal amount and that that is known as amortization okay it is it is slowly paying off its debt that it has taken so uh, depreciation and amortization when you subtract depreciation and amortization from ebita you get ebit okay see this depreciation and amortization now you have subtracted so it, it gets deduct it, it you know it it gets uh, uh, you know away from this terminology so now it becomes only ebit earnings before interest and tax okay earnings before interest and tax because you have already subtracted now depreciation and amortization you have already subtracted from here and this ebit ebit is also known as operating income okay this is also known as operating income and how do you obtain it you you subtract this depreciation and amortization uh, da from ebita 5500 so ebita minus da is ebit right ebita minus da is ebit basically so you get 4900 here now from this operating income you will pay the interest expenditure right you will pay the interest to the bank from where you have taken loan say your interest uh, expenditure is 900 rupees from ebit see ebit now you subtracted uh, i interest now you get ebt okay ebt is also known as pre-tax income because see still you have not paid the taxes now this is your actual taxable income okay pre-tax income 4000 on this 4000 your income tax or your corporate tax whatever in whichever country you are living depending on the rules of that come that government of that country you have to pay the income tax or corporate tax so basically the 800 rupees is the income tax on your pre-tax income this is your taxable income okay now when you subtract income tax from the pre-tax income it becomes your net income okay it becomes your net income so net income is 4000 minus 800 it gives you 3200 3200 now out of now this is a net income of the company now out of this net income it will also distribute dividends to its shareholders right 
it will distribute the dividends to its shareholders say for example it distributed 1000 rupees this the company management decides how much dividend to distribute okay so out of 3200 it it distributes 1000 rupees to the shareholders and the retained earnings are basically whatever is retained with the company so out of 3200 1000 rupees is distributed to the shareholders 2200 remains with the company so this is known as retained earning now this retained earning becomes part of the it becomes part of the shareholders equity right it becomes part of the shareholders equity and it goes in the balance sheet right because now it is with the company it can use this money for and it becomes a kind of asset for the company right um, so basically but uh, you know it, it becomes a part of shareholders equity because it is the amount that is left with the company so uh, now uh, you see uh, that you know this is a simple uh, income statement i hope you have understood this if you have any doubt please ask me it is very simple most important thing for our exam is that you have to understand the ebit okay ebit operating income so in, from operating income when you subtract interest you get the pre-tax income so you just uh, try to understand this from the operating income you have subtracted everything okay from your uh, total uh, you know sales revenue you have subtracted your cost of goods sold you have also subtracted your operating expenses you have also subtracted the depreciation and amortization after that you get the operating income so uh, just try to keep uh, these things in mind we'll continue uh, corporate finance in the next lecture also thank you